from Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. And this is Chasing and Repose Part 20. In this video, I'm going to show you how to polish up the bezel setting. I finished my little bit of tapping on top and honestly, that's really all I'm gonna do. It really doesn't take that much usually because I just need to like press it over so that it's holding it tightly. I wanna make sure that I'm hiding that silver rim from my original enamel bezel. And you know, that's it. It's nice and smooth, nothing's wiggling. And you know, you also have to remember with enamel, enamels are fragile. So this is not the kind of setting where I'm gonna be like, you know what, I'm gonna like put a little extra bit of like uh, 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 in it. It's like, the only reason really I tapped from the, the top was because I needed that high angle. And at that high angle, I really can't get a lot of force in there because um, if you're, I don't know, maybe if you're six feet tall, you can. So remember me using the leather mallet at that point is not really about like, I really wanna like smack the hell out of this. It's just that I need to apply a little bit of force from the top and my shoulder kind of can't quite get high enough to do that. So. It looks really good, so the only thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use one of these beautiful wheels. If you've never used one of these wheels before, this is my bezel settings polishing kit. Every single wheel in here was chosen specifically to polish the edge of a bezel and they won't damage your stone, which is of course incredibly important because there's a million wheels out there that'll polish your metal, but if you slip and hit your stone or hit your enamel, it can damage it. And you know, as I've told you guys many times before with lots of other things, we all think like, oh, I can not slip, I can not do that. Uh, sooner or later, everybody slips, that's life. So it's essential when I'm polishing up something that I use a wheel that won't damage my piece. So I just have a few different shapes in here. Basically, I have the Swifty wheels, I have the large and the small flat wheels. You know, they're like a little, I'll show you a close up so you can see what I'm talking about. But these are what I use most often for big bezels and I use a smaller wheel for smaller bezels because I can go really just totally flat right on the top, it works great. Now some people, crazy I know, like to clean up their setting but they don't want quite such a high shine and in which case you use the gray pumice wheels so i have the same kind of a thing like a nice flat wheel shape that you can go right on top you know most of the time i want a high shine on my setting but there's always different circumstances and so that way your bases are covered there's also a few of these little knife edge wheels in here what they're for is sometimes if you have a bunch of little bezels and they're all super close to each other, like a wheel like this, you're just not gonna be able to get in there and do what you need to do. In which case, you need to be able to use a knife edge wheel so you can kind of like angle it you know, and get in between and do all that kind of like stuff. So I don't use the knife edge wheels as often, but definitely there will be situations where you need them. And it has a few of the little mandrels in here, the screw mandrels, because a lot of people are like, oh, uh, I'll just switch one wheel to the other. I don't need extra mandrels. Let me tell you something. Every time you go to polish, you have to unscrew this little tiny screw and screw it back in. You will go mental. And maybe you're not like me and that kind of thing won't bother you in the least. Me, that drives completely insane. So I like have to have extra ones of these so that when I set up one of these on the mandrel, I can just throw it back in the box with the mandrel and leave it there so the next time I need it, I can just use it right away instead of having to screw around with it. Like I said, maybe that's just me, but to me, this is like the essential stuff for cleaning up a bezel. So I made a special kit. This is available on our website, of course. Um, if you already have favorite wheels that you like to use, you know, go nuts. Uh, I'm just showing you what I use and why I use what I use. I have one of my large uh, Swifty wheels in here. Uh, in my microtorque, I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna polish a little bit. Now, normally when I'm done with the piece, I would go ahead and put this in hot water and get the jet set out. But this piece is so big and sort of flat that honestly, I can polish it right on here. So I'm gonna do that and I'll take it out of the jet set after I'm done polishing. Um, if you haven't done polishing with me before, remember that the most important elements for when you're using a flex shaft, Dremel, Microtorque, whatever you're using, is to have your arms really comfortably braced on the table. I like to hold it in your dominant hand with my four fingers like that and my thumb sticking out because then my thumb 
goes either on the piece or in this case, like on my wood block to brace me because essentially anything you're trying to do like up in the air, like you can forget it. You're gonna be like, your piece can ricochet across the room and you don't have any control. So essentially whenever you're using a machine that plugs in, the first thing you think about is Am I comfortable? You know what I mean? Like, am I relaxed? Am I in position? You know, like whatever you need to do with your chair or your arms or whatever, get comfortable, get yourself really nice and supported, and then start doing your work. It will yield amazing benefits if you actually are nice and selfish and think about yourself first. When I use the flex shaft, I'm always using it like I'm peeling a carrot. I'm gonna pick a section and I'm gonna lightly stroke the wheel from top to bottom of that section until I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna move on to the next. Now for me, I'm right-handed. So the area that's easiest for me to work on my piece is essentially what I would consider to be like um, let's say between two and five o'clock on the clock. You know, that's my easiest area to work on. So normally what I do is I work that section and then I just rotate my piece a little bit so that I am still at between two and five o'clock and I kind of work my way around the piece that way I'm like super controlled, I'm comfortable, and I'm not like, you know, reaching or getting in a weird position because let me tell you, it's always when you're like, I'm gonna just, or whatever, that something slips and you make a ding or, or whatever, or tragedy ensues and we really don't want that. So I'm gonna get myself nice and comfortable and I'm gonna start polishing. So. And I pretty much have my wheel positioned flat up against the bezel because I just want to smooth it and shine it right from the top. Thing is with this wheel too it really doesn't take a whole lot that smoothed it out pretty nicely in those areas I'm going to show you a little close-up and then I'll go ahead and do the rest you see what I mean how that top edge right there whoop, you know right along this edge right here how it just kind of smoothed out and now it's flat and shiny on top that's really all I'm looking for uh, I don't normally use the Swifty on the side of the bezel as well. I normally use other things because I usually don't want a super high shine on the side of the bezel, but it depends. And you certainly can. I mean, that, that wheel will work everywhere if you want, but I think having some, you know, a different finish in a few different spaces kind of makes it a little more visually interesting. But you see what I mean? It just flattens that little top edge gives it a little shine that's really all i'm looking for so now i'm pretty happy with that section so i'm just going to work my way around the whole thing <laughs> my old peeling a carrot method. Because I don't want to hold this wheel like in one spot for long because then I'm going to start to get an indent and I'm not looking for an indent. I'm looking for a nice even finish. So, you know, when you're using polishing wheels, relatively speaking, you have to kind of keep them moving.
I guess I'll go around again just for giggles, but honestly, it's looking pretty nice. I think this is done. Also, you have to remember, like, you got to know when to quit, too, <laughs> because you don't want to keep polishing and not really have much peace left by the time you're done. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's everything I'm looking for. Sometimes it is hard to stop. it's official. I'm going to show you a close-up and it's all done. Yay! So there it is in all its glory, looking all smooth and shiny, which is uh, pretty much everything I'm looking for. So um, what I'm going to do, I mean, I'll peel my tape off and uh, my next step is I got to get it off the block and I got to get rid of the jet set. So I'll have to boil up some hot water and soak it in there and release it from its... Uh, from its grip, but, and always after I'm completely done and the jet sets out and everything, then I'll look at the polish of the piece and just see if there's any like little touch-ups that need to be made because sometimes, you know, that happens. I try to protect everything as much as I can, but you know, you never know. I might just give it a little, little zhuzh, you know, here and there uh, as one does, but that is it. Yay. Well, here it is in all its glory. Looks pretty smooth and groovy. So uh, my next step is I've got to pry this icky jet set up off that block and then get it in some hot water and slowly but surely uh, remove my piece from it. But pretty happy with it. it looks, looks pretty good to me.